All right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of the NFL Seekers podcast. Today, we are going to be deep diving into the NFC East. We'll be talking about each team's offseason starting lineups, and at the end, we'll each predict the winner of the division. Um, a really competitive division, uh, the most winningest division last year. Uh, all these teams could really compete for the playoffs. Uh, how are you, Josh? Doing good. Um, been a fun weekend of having football back. It's felt good. You know, got to watch some real preseason games. I'll shout out my Chargers yesterday for um, for beating uh, the Rams, you know, to win the title for L.A. this year. Um, but, yeah, it's been good. Football's back. I'm feeling good. I'm excited to talk about the NFC East. Um, how are you doing, Dan? I'm good. I'm so happy football's back. It, it, it's kind of surreal that it's back. I, I made the drive out to Arizona to go watch the Broncos play the the Cardinals. Their, their starters looked a little rough. The offensive line is very bad, so. I'm not too optimistic, but my boy Jerry Judy did score, so I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's exciting. You got the Broncos trip on. Who's who? Who do you got on your shirt? It's it's Russ. It's a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got Russ and we got Herb. We got Russ and Herb. That's you know we got to shout out our dudes. <laughs> Two different worlds, man. But we'll, we'll we'll get into the NFC East conversation, and um, I guess we'll talk about the 2022 recap and. It was a, like I said, it was a really, really good all around division. Um, the the records were all great. They were all in the playoff hunt. The Philadelphia Eagles finished first with a fourteen and three record, made it all the way to the Super Bowl. Obviously, lost to the Chiefs. Um, the Dallas Cowboys finished a second with a twelve and five record. The New York Giants finished at nine and seven. They also got a playoff win over the Vikings, which was uh, pretty easy to predict if anyone actually watched the vikings and giants throughout the season it was kind of obvious that the giants are better than the vikings and the washington commanders finished last with the eight and eight record which isn't too shabby at all so pretty solid yeah no overall the division is fantastic very competitive um very good teams very good coaching you know a lot of star talent um on both of these teams you know the eagles were definitely you know are in the driver's seat right now with the giants you know and brian deball just right on their tail so i mean it's it's going to be fun and the Cowboys, you know, I mean, it's it's all it's all around good. And we might even see a glow up from the Redskins. We don't know how Sam Howell's going to be, but, you know, this is going to be this is going to be a fun one to tune into this year. Yeah. Uh, Sam Howell's first preseason game. He looked pretty sharp. Uh, he he was pretty safe, but he threw a nice touchdown to Jahan Dotson. And I guess that's a pretty good transition into our first team we'll talk about. And that is the Washington Commanders. Um, You know, I, it all kind of depends on Sam Howell and. He, he was a good prospect coming out of North Carolina. Um, he, he has a nice, strong arm. He's a good runner of the football. I, I, I think he has like some upside with Eric Bieniemy coaching him up. I don't think I would count him out um, just yet. No, no means. I, I'm actually, you know, Sam Howell would have probably come out of the draft a year earlier. He would have probably gone first or second round and been, you know, talked about a lot in a lot more higher regards. Um, so, I mean, Sam Howell definitely – I think, in my opinion, a really good prospect who kind of just fell off into the draft and kind of people have kind of forgot about him. But, you know, with Eric bien I mean, you know, who was just coaching Patrick Mahomes, maybe we'll see a little bit of magic that he brings over to the to the Redskins. Yeah. And when you get into Washington's offseason, they didn't really have uh, too many notable signings. I would say their most notable addition would be the addition of Eric bien coming over from Kansas City to be their offensive coordinator. That's really fun. I hope he... Um, I, I mean, I know that he will um, cater this offense to complement all these receivers' talents, and the, they have a few good running backs. He's going to complement their talent. So I think all these guys are going to be used very well, and they're going to be good in fantasy. Uh, they're bringing Jacoby Brissett to come in and compete with Sam Howell. It looks like Sam Howell is going to win that job, but Jacoby Brissett's a really good backup, as we, as we saw in Cleveland last year. They're bringing Andrew Wiley to be their starting right tackle. Um, he comes right over from the Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs, and He's a great right tackle, so I love that. They bring in Nate, Nick Gates from New York uh, to be the starting center, and then they bring in Cody Barton from Seattle to start at linebacker to replace Cole Holcomb. Their notable losses were just Taylor Heineke and Cole Holcomb. Not not very notable at all. Yeah, not a very flashy offseason by any means. I mean, very under the radar, very minimal moves. I mean, nothing game-changing. You kind of would have liked to have seen them do something a little bit bigger you know, bring over some bigger names, you know, some something a little bit more flashy, especially when you finish last in a pretty good division. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm just really excited to see Sam Howell take over this offense. And I think that's, you know, Eric Bien-Ami and Sam Howell starting is kind of the biggest news lines for these guys. Um, and it's going to be interesting, but I do like the addition of Andrew Wiley. I think he can be a 
nice plug and play right tackle for him. Um, and then, you know, Cody Barton, not a bad, you know, special team linebacker addition. But yeah, not, I mean, no losses though. So, I mean, they're, they're kind of roll, running it back, but running it back in a different fashion. Mm-hmm. And then when you get into that offense, you've got Sam Howell throwing to Terry McLaurin, uh, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, uh, and Diami Brown, who was his college teammate at North Carolina, which I absolutely love. I think that's one of the better wide receiver fours in the NFL at this point. So watch out for a little Diami Brown breakout season with his his college quarterback, Sam Howell, in there. And Terry McLaurin, just so underrated. Um, he Just so productive every single year. Jahan Dotson looked great as a rookie last year. He already got a touchdown from Sam Howell in the preseason. He scored a few last year as well. I feel like they had a pretty good connection, so – I love that. Both of them in the same rookie class. And then you look in their running back room, they've got Brian Robinson, who was a beast last year as a rookie. And Antonio Gibson's a really good compliment to him, a great receiving back. And they've got Chris Rodriguez, who was honestly a pretty good pick in the sixth round. So they've got some options in the running back room that can kind of rotate them all. And their offensive line is pretty solid. They've got Charles Leno, uh, Sadiq Charles, Nick Gates coming over, Sam Cosme, who's really good, Andrew Wiley, who's solid. And then they draft Braden Daniels in re- Ricky Stromberg, who are both really good uh, interior prospects. So I like that a lot. And their tight end room isn't anything crazy, but a solid offense. Yeah, no. And yeah, you gotta, I mean, obviously the, um, the bright point of this offense is the wide receiver core. I mean, a wonderful top three wide receivers. I mean, Terry McLaurin, we can't speak about how underrated and how good of a prospect he is and has been. I mean, Terry McLaurin, I think since he's been in the NFL, hasn't even had under a thousand yards receiving and he's had a whole carousel of quarterbacks. So you know, and on the fantasy side of things, get Terry McLaurin this year. Get him, get him, get him. At his ADP, he's an absolute steal. I love Terry McLaurin. And then even Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel, I mean, really, really good underrated receivers. It just kind of feels like an all underrated room at receiver. And then, yeah, I like I like having Diami Brown and Sam Howell reunited. I mean, they already have chemistry, and hopefully it just picks up right where it's at, but really good receiving core. And then um, Ricky Stromberg, um, he was one of my sleepers in the draft this year. And he's there. He's their second string center right now, who I really like, who honestly probably has guard flexibility, but I think their offensive line, nothing, nothing to write home about, but pretty solid. Um, Logan Thomas is okay. Tight end, nothing, nothing too fancy, but overall, you know, pretty solid, you know, really good receiving room. The rest of the offense, pretty solid. And I do like Brian Robinson. I think he could be something, something pretty special. Um, you know, I think, I think he's a true bell cow running back. Back and I do like Gibson with the um, wide receiver flexibility he has coming out of the backfield. Yeah, it is solid all, all around when you consider Eric Bieniemy is going to be coaching all these guys up and using them to their best abilities, and it all kind of just relies on Sam Howell if he can hit his potential. They're going to be really, really good because he honestly has a decent amount of potential. He's he's a good quarterback. So, I, and I mean, in the preseason game, he showed that he can just be a safe, um, like a serviceable Jimmy G type of quarterback too. So. If, if that's the route they want to go, then that's fine with me because we'll get into this defense. This defense is the scary part of this team. And um, the, the honestly, I think they could really make a playoff push because of this defense. Their, their defensive line is one of the better in the NFL with Montez Sweat and Chase Young off the edge. They've got Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, the Alabama boys in the interior. It's an incredible defensive line with a lot of depth. Um they they bring in Cody Barton to come in and be the middle linebacker with Jamin Davis, who's an athletic freak. And then in the secondary, they've got Kendall Fuller, who's been really solid for a long time. And Emmanuel Forbes, first round pick to come over uh, opposite of him. He's a really skinny guy, but he's lengthy and he's a ball hawk. He'll, he'll make a lot of plays on the ball. And then they got Benjamin St. Juiced, um, who was really good last year. They got Quan Martin, who's going to be a really good nickel um, slash safety. He struggled in the preseason game yesterday. He got a lot of hate for it, but I think he's going to be really good. Um, and then the safety room is really solved with Cameron Curl, Derek Forrest, and uh, Jeremy Reeves. So absolutely love this defense. It's so deep and solid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it all starts up front in the trenches. And that's, you know, arguably the most important part of the defense because it all starts up front. And I mean, <laughs> you can see, you see, if you notice in our little graphic that Dan has up here, um, every single person on their defensive line was a first round pick and they were, you know, <laughs> which is pretty nuts. They've invested heavily in their, in their defensive line. I mean, with the Bama boys, um, you know, Montez Sweat and Chase Young, who they spent the uh, second overall pick on. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. You love to see it. I mean, it's, it's a lethal defensive line and they're, and they're going to be solid. And they actually have pretty good depth too. Um, and with KJ Henry, even they drafted could be something could turn into something. Okay. 
um, who they drafted in the fifth round out of Clemson. Um, and then, yeah, I, I um, so the, you know, their linebacking core with Jamin Davis and Cody Barton is just solid. I mean, it's nothing, nothing too good, but I do like Jamin Davis. He is an athletic freak. And I really do like um, their corner room. And I think, I think overall it's pretty solid. I mean, Emmanuel Forbes, me and you were kind of hating on the pick um, earlier in the season and, you know, rightfully so he was taken too early, but it doesn't take away that he's a good prospect and he should be good. It just, there was some guys they probably should have took over him, but you know, Emmanuel Forbes will probably end up being pretty good. And he is a very good ball hawk. And then Jatavis Martin, um, that was another good pick in the second round. So, I mean, they invest in their secondary, they've invested heavily in, in their defense and this could be their key to, to the, to a playoff ticket. hundred percent. And one more underrated aspect of this defense is they have Jack Del Rio coaching him up. And I feel like he's just been around forever and, I don't think he's ever had a bad defense. I feel like at this point, he's one of the more underrated coaches because he's a he's got that defense playing really good. Absolutely. Love it. All right. And then we will get on to our next team, who is a really exciting team. They got a playoff win. They got Brian Dable, the, the most qualified coach, I would say, in the last decade coming in. Like, he is just such a great coach. He has Alabama ties. Uh, He's got Bill Belichick ties, obviously the Bills ties, he, what, what he did with Josh Allen, what he did with Daniel Jones last year. He is an incredible coach, the most qualified that I've seen in a while. And the Giants got an absolute gem, and they're going to have one of the better offensive coaches for decades to come. And that's just awesome. I'm really excited for this Giants team. When you get into their offseason, they got big money signing Darren Waller coming in, which is going to be really fun. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited about him in fantasy and just – as a production standpoint in general, I think he's going to be their main receiver. You, you kind of see offenses like the chiefs um, kind of model their offense, like uh, model their offense, like the chiefs. And they, they use tight ends as their wide receiver one. And I think Darren Waller will be the wide receiver one here. He's that alpha. He's the big guy that can do it all. And they also bring in Paris Campbell in the slot that can take the top off the defense and do a lot of things. They they bring in Rakeem Nunez Roches and Sean Robinson, two good interior defensive linemen. They bring Bobby Okariki over from the Colts, a really good middle linebacker, and feels like they've needed a good middle linebacker for a while now. They bring uh, Bobby McCain over from Washington, who had a really solid season last year, and they're going to need that because they lost Julian Love, and they had a great draft. We'll we'll talk about the the guys they drafted a lot this episode, but they had a fantastic draft and. Their only losses were Kenny Galladay and Richie James in the receiving room, which is not too big. And then Jalen Smith and Julian Love on the defense. So no losses really. And this team's going to be loaded. Yeah. I mean, to highlight it all with, the, with your picks right here, I mean, Darren Waller was the biggest um, offseason addition. And, you know, he could he could really be something special. And I think Danny Dimes is the kind of quarterback that needs a, a Darren Waller, you know, one of the top tight ends, you know, a guy that, you know, is a vertical threat um, who can block really well. So, I mean, I can't say enough things about Darren Waller and how excited I am to see him in this Giants offense with a with a you know an offensive guru like Brian uh, Dayball, um, and I just oh, I'm so excited for that. Um, I know Shane and you have absolutely talked him up a whole lot in fantasy in in, in previous episodes, but yeah, get your hands on Darren Waller because he's looking like he's going to be the wide receiver one, you know, in this offense and for fantasy aspect having a tight end who's the wide receiver one in this offense, you got to get all over that because that is so valuable. And then um, another one I'll, uh, I'll point out um, of, of their offseason uh, additions was uh, Bobby Okariki. Um, very solid middle linebacker, you know, is going to be a, you know, might, might even be a guy that could potentially take the green dot role in that, in that defense. Um, very smart dude. Um, and that was a, that was a pretty big loss for the Colts, but you know, a great addition for the, for the giants. So that was a great signing. I really like those. And then, yeah, the notable losses, Kenny get a holiday. So underwhelming. I mean, just so <laughs> disappointing ever since. I mean, he was good with the lions. He was, he was a solid prospect. He was good. He he played good for the lions. And then whatever happened, he was just not a fit in New York. Uh, it just, he, it was horrible. Um, and that is that's not a loss at all. I would just count that as just a W in their books. Get that guy off your payroll because he sucked for you guys. Um, and then Richie James started coming out at the end of the season, but you know they they did replace him in the draft. And then uh, Jalen Smith and Julian Love are just you know just pieces to a defense. They're not they're not anything special. Yeah, Kenny Galladay had one of the bigger fall offs that I've seen, and he honestly was really good for the Lions. I remember, like in fantasy, he was a really good option, and then he just completely fell off once he got paid, which is really weird. I don't know what happened with that, but 
we'll get into this uh, awesome Giants offense, and Brian Dable is going to have these guys um, producing really well. Um, the receiving core is awesome with Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell, Jalen Hyatt, Sterling Shepard, Wandell Robinson, and a bunch more. They have like 10 receivers that could literally make this roster. It's pretty crazy. I, I think Jalen Hyatt will have a really good rookie season. He looks pretty electric. Um, I think that he'll kind of overtake Darius Slayton eventually. And Isaiah Hodgins is one of the more underrated receivers. He's just so reliable. He's literally just Adam Thielen, um, but he's not 30. So love that. Um, and then I guess we we got to talk about Saquon because he's back here and he's going to be playing this year. And he's he's that guy. I'd say he's the third best receiving back in the NFL right now behind Eckler and uh, McCaffrey. And him and Bijan are right there next to them. And I'm he's just an absolute beast. Uh, Dable loves using the guy. And I think they're going to run him into the ground this year. So if you guys have him in fantasy, he's going to definitely pay off. Um, and then we talked about Darren Waller, just an absolute beast. Danny Dimes is going to love the guy. Danny Dimes was really solid last year. He really was taking care of the football. He, he wasn't making any careless mistakes and fumbling and turning it over. So I love to see that. And I think he's going to be pretty accurate and place some some fades and go balls up to Darren Waller. And he's going to come down with most of them because he's he's not really human. Darren Waller is an absolute monster. So I love that a lot. Their offensive line is pretty fantastic now with Andrew Thomas coming into his own as maybe the best left tackle in the NFL already, which is awesome. Uh, they got Ben Bredesen and Joshua as competing at left guard. John Michael Schmitz coming in at center in the second round is absolutely beautiful. Reminiscent of Creed Humphrey falling in the second round and He's going to be dominant. He was dominant in the preseason game already. Um, Mark Lewinsky is a super solid guard, and they got Evan Neal, who wasn't great as a rookie, but he's a great prospect, and I, I expect him to take a big step up like Andrew Thomas did in year two. Yeah, um, I'm impressed with this with how they've um, with how they've revamped and rebuilt this offense. I really, really like it. I mean, this offense could you know potentially be a top ten offense in the NFL. Um, it's really solid. It doesn't have many weaknesses. I mean, I don't really even think there is a weakness um, on this offense. You know, I think the biggest key factor is how Danny Dimes plays. And he, if he plays as good as he did last year and maybe even takes a step forward in year two with Brian Dayball, this offense could be absolutely lethal. So, I mean, watch out for the Giants because, I mean, they're receiving core, solid, very deep, very good depth, you know, um, can't point. I mean, I and I've I've always, you know, these guys are just very underrated. I really like Isaiah Hodgins, very underrated. I really like Darius Slayton. I have liked him. I know he's kind of had drop issues, but Darius Slayton's a really good wide receiver um, when given the opportunity. And then and Jalen Hyatt's just going to take the top off of those defenses. That's awesome. So absolutely love that. He's been showing out in camp. And then, yeah, from this offensive line, I mean, with the big, I would kind of call it the big three, Andrew Thomas, now John Michael Schmitz in the middle, and then Evan Neal on the right side, who should take a big step forward this year. It's looking awesome. So watch out for the Giants. I mean, Danny Dimes will take this team as far as he does, but I could see another big leap from him in year two, and I'm I'm excited for this offense. Absolutely love it. Yeah, and something Brian Dable absolutely unlocked with Danny Dimes is the the rushing aspect. He had 700 rushing yards with seven rushing touchdowns last year, which just it, it sounds silly, but the the vanilla Vic thing is real. He he can really lean into that rushing ability, and he he's he's hard to 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 stop as a runner. Like he's actually Josh Allen esque, not really, but he's he's up there. Like he's he's not bad. So you love that that they're leaning into that, and it's a new aspect to that Osman offense that's helping them and. And Saquon's going to be the star that, that gets this thing going. Absolutely. Then, Love it. And then when you get into that defense, it's a little bit more suspect, but they've got some good pieces, a lot of young pieces, and they've got the absolute beast up front, Dexter Lawrence in the nose, one of the more underrated nose tackles, one of the better nose tackles last year in the NFL. Um, Leonard Williams next to him, which is awesome, with uh, Ashawn Robinson, Rakeem Nunez Rochez, uh, Jihad Ward, who was really good last year, and then you got Aziz Ajalari, Kayvon Tibula on the edge. That's awesome. Kayvon was an absolute beast coming out of Oregon. He he could have had a better rookie year, but just because I expected him to win rookie of the year and he wasn't um, – he didn't really live up to my expectations personally, but he's a beast. Uh, he's going to be a really good player for the Giants. Um, their, their secondary is what's a little bit questionable to me. They have Adoree Jackson in the slot, which is awesome. Um, they have Trey Hawkins, six-round pick, starting at corner as of right now. They did bring in Amani Ariwarie. He's kind of struggled recently. Um, Darnell Holmes has struggled. Um, so their cornerback room is a little bit interesting, but they did bring in Deontay Banks in the first round, who I absolutely loved. 
one of my favorite picks um, of the first round for sure. I think it's a perfect fit. Start him day one. He's going to be a beast, um, a playmaker. And then they, they did lose Julian Love, so the safety room isn't perfect, but they have Xavier McKinney, who's an absolute beast. And then they have Jason Pinnock and then uh, Bobby McCain, who, like I said last year, was awesome for Washington. Yeah. Um, not, you know, definitely not feeling as confident in this defense as I am their offense, um, to say. But they do have some really good key pieces. And, you know, starting up front with Dexter Lawrence, you can't say enough good things about that dude. I mean, he's a true, you know, one technique, get in there, stuff the run. And he actually has, he's actually a pretty good pass rusher for his size too, which kind of makes me laugh because he's huge. Um, and then um, Aziz Erjilari, um, Leonard Williams, pretty solid. Sean Robinson, you know, older in age, but pretty solid too. Um Bobby Okariki, like we said, he's going to come over. He's going to command the middle of that um, of that defense. I really like him. I think he could be a very underrated, really big signing for this Giants um, for this Giants defense. And then, yeah, their uh, their corner room definitely. Ooh, sorry, there's a bug, a bug attack in my face. Can't make it up. <laughs> Can't make that up. Fantasy bug attack. <laughs> their podcast bug attack. Gotta love that. Gosh. <laughs> but yeah back back on track sorry sorry my mind wanders a little bit <laughs> there's a bug attacking me but um yeah the the cornerback room is definitely where you know it's 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 shaky it's iffy but i mean they do have some good pieces though i mean deontay banks who me and you absolutely loved coming out of the process i mean you you went so far to say in our other podcast that he was one of the steals of the draft um at where he was drafted and a really good scheme fit, really good player. I mean, you can play him in, you know, press man, you can play him zone. He can kind of do everything. And he's, and he's got wheels. He's fast. So he's got that recovery speed. Um, Adoree Jackson's really solid. Xavier McKinney's really solid. And then Bobby McCain, who is third on the death chart right now, but probably will end up working his way up that, um, up that roster. But yeah, overall, I think that's gotta be a mistake because Bobby, yeah. I think Bobby McCain's going to start a strong safety. I don't really know what's up with that. <laughs> yeah. That's, it seems kind of weird. I'm scratching my head over, over looking at that, but yeah. it's interesting, but yeah, this, this defense not feeling too confident about it, but they definitely have the right pieces, you know, star studs, um, you know, with, I mean, of course, Dexter Lawrence starting up front, but I, I do like, I do like the pieces. We just need to see them come together and, you know, play a little bit better than last year for sure. Yeah. And I think with uh, Brian Dable and that great culture they have in place, they will. And then we'll get on to the Dallas Cowboys, who are one of the Giants' bigger rivals and competition right now. And, man, the Cowboys have one of the more talented rosters in the NFL. They are so fun. They have stars, absolute stars, all over this roster. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't very skeptical of Mike McCarthy being the man here, being the – the offensive coordinator kind of because they 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 get they ship Kellen Moore off and then the Mike McCarthy goes and blames Kellen Moore for their offense last year, which was really just <laughs> comical to me. And I I didn't really like or respect Mike McCarthy much, but after that, that kind of just set it off for me. And I really, really dislike Mike McCarthy for that. That's just not professional, not not something you should do, especially when what, what, what Kellen Moore did in the preseason with you know a bunch of backups. 200 and almost i mean it should have been 270 yards rushing but there's a 71 yard touchdown but 200 yards with backup running backs and i mean i know it's preseason but kellen moore just lights out play caller i, I couldn't be more excited but yeah I mean, kellen moore is a top five play caller in the nfl and i just think that's silly that mike mccarthy would have the audacity to say something like that because he's a mess as a play caller and a situational play caller and i mean kellen moore strings plays together really well like a Sean Payton-esque, and that's something that the Cowboys are going to have a little learning curve with this year with uh, Brian Schottenheimer and Mike McCarthy because it's a, it's just, it's just less competency and and then as as you saw like he blamed Kellen Moore and Kellen Moore was in a terrible situation with how the Cowboys uh, were last year with Dak getting hurt and everything so I just hated that Kellen Moore is a great offensive coordinator and I don't love Mike McCarthy I think this will probably be his last year as a head coach. Um, but this team's awesome. This team's awesome. Yeah, I think this team is absolutely fantastic. I think the only thing holding them back is Mike McCarthy. And the fact that Jerry Jones is still holding on to him. I mean, what they should have done is fired Mike McCarthy and promoted Kellen Moore. And I think, you know, I think you probably would be Super Bowl contenders, you know, if you would have, if I, Mike McCarthy is just the crutch to this team. And he has been. I mean, this roster is too talented to not be winning and competing for Super Bowls. 
and you kind of got one guy to blame and you know it's the leader of your football team and it's it's McCarthy so I mean they 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 need to do something sooner than later um and you hate to see this really good roster kind of just be crippled by McCarthy yeah and I mean I don't think Kellen Moore is too mad he's he's coaching up Herbert right now so I think his um career is probably benefiting by that I wanted to get the Mike McCarthy conversation out of the way though because it's kind of a negative conversation on this really good roster so we'll get into the, the notable offseason additions for the Cowboys and they bring in just really two players because they're kind of in a cap situation as of now they bring in Brandon Cooks the veteran receiver who's honestly going to be a really good compliment to CD I like that a lot if he stays healthy he's going to be really good he's been good everywhere he's been for a long time he's really solid all, all around receiver and then they bring in Stephon Gilmore to be a starting corner opposite of Trayvon Diggs which is awesome because he was great for the Colts last year and he's he's getting up there in age but he didn't show any signs of regression last year he was honestly a really shut down corner so I love that as well yeah no I mean Stephon Gilmore played lights out for the Colts last year. I mean, he was probably the best player on that defense, even at his, you know, high age. Um, and then um, shout out Brandon Cooks, too. I mean, because Brandon Cooks seems to be the guy who gets goes team to team to team to team to team and still plays at a high level. And I honestly think he'll be actually a really good complimentary piece for C.D. Lamb. And I do like that one-two punch uh, between both of those two. So overall, those two additions, really solid. I really like that. Um, and then lose. Zeke I don't think that's a big loss because the more the balls in Tony Pollard's hand is better I mean not calling Zeke a horrible running back I mean he's a really good goal line guy really good power back but Tony Pollard showed last year that he needs to be getting the touches you know he should be a 20 touch guy game because that dude is electric and then I think what hurts him the most was losing Dalton Schultz I mean he was so solid he's such a good piece for Dak and he was just you know he was just a really good tight end, and, th- and those are hard to come by in the NFL these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they also lose Connor McGovern uh, to go start t- for the Bills, which is kind of a big loss. He's a really good lineman. And then they do lose Anthony Barr, which isn't too big of a deal. But, yeah, uh, Zeke is kind of the notable loss there, and there's a possibility they bring him back. But if they just have Pollard as that three-down back, their main guy to focus on him, I, I think that's the move. I think he'll be really great for them. And uh, we'll get into the roster. Uh, we'll start with Tony Pollard, I guess, because I was just talking about him. I love the guy. He's such a great receiver. He's going to be electric in fantasy football. He he can break a 70-yard touchdown on any given play. He's awesome. He He's a good runner between the tackles, and he's a really smooth receiver. I love that. They have a deuce bond behind him, which is a little bit interesting. I, um, I would like to see them bring in a veteran running back, maybe if they plan on having more of a running back by committee role. But if they plan on just using Tony Pollard like every down, I'm totally fine with that. That'd be awesome. But yeah, their backups aren't great. <laughs> I don't think Deuce Vaughn can really be relied on as like a good backup. But he, 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 I guess that's kind of disrespectful because there's been some short running backs that have succeeded in the NFL, and and Deuce Vaughn has he's got game. He's a he's a pretty good football player. I'll be honest, like. I wouldn't be surprised to see him be a Darren Sproles type. He just looks so goofy because he's so short. But <laughs> he had he had a pretty good move in his preseason game where he did like a double spin move, and he's it is funny. He's just so small. He did score, um, but yeah, you just you, know, you it's just a little scary. You just don't know how you feel about him because he is so small. But and you know Tony Pilar is not a big back, so it just doesn't seem like they complement each other that well. But it is interesting. Yeah, if you get Deuce Vaughn in like Bijan's body or something, he's probably a first round pick because he really is a really good running back. He's just so tiny. But the receiving core is awesome. They've got CeeDee Lamb, who's just an absolute monster. I think he's going to take a really big step up this year, an even bigger step up because he's been great. Um, I, he's one of my favorite receivers. He's just so good. Brandon Cooks, like we said, is going to be a really good compliment to him. Michael Gallup, when he's out there, is a really solid third option. Um, I love that. And then they brought in Jalen Tolbert in the third round last year. Hopefully he can develop a little bit. And then they've got a really good offensive line. Obviously, they always do. Um, Tyron Smith at left tackle. Tyler Smith, last year's first-round pick at left guard. Tyler Biedez at center. Uh, Zach Martin, who's got a little contract situation going on right now. Hopefully, they can retain him. Probably the best guard the NFL has seen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> absolute beast. And then Terrence Steele on the right right side. It's just incredible. They don't have a weak leak on the offensive line. So, if they're healthy, they're good. And they got Dak. I'll let you talk about Dak. He's you know, we're not the highest on Dak. He's kind of – he doesn't really elevate things around him too often. It kind of takes perfect situations around him to succeed, and he's had perfect situations around him, and he hasn't really succeeded to the fullest. So 
I don't know. Hopefully they can take another step up this year, but they don't have Kellen Moore. So I don't, I don't know, man. It, it, I don't know. It's weird. It's kind of, you kind of feel weird about it. I mean, I feel like Dak's a good leader and he's a good locker room guy. And I mean, he's, he's an athlete. I mean, he's a good athlete, but he just doesn't elevate the team and he just doesn't quite get them there. He just doesn't have that like winning mentality. It kind of feels like it doesn't seem like there's anything stopping him from being a good quarterback, but he just doesn't, he just doesn't have that it factor and you just don't get any wow things from Dak Prescott, but not to hate on him too much because he is an okay quarterback, but he was a little careless with the football and he has been throwing a lot of interceptions lately. Um, but this, this offense really is super amazing. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line, you just, it's always good. I mean, they invest so much into it. There's no weak link from, from left tackle to right tackle. Everyone is almost top of the, you know, these guys are top of their position top. I don't know how they do it, but they just have that, that culture of just amazing offensive line. And you can't speak enough good things about it. And then, I mean, on this offense, the playmakers are there. There's nothing holding them back. I mean, you got CD lamb, who is a top five top, you know, I mean, I've, top 10, top five, arguably receiver in the NFL. And he is just amazing. I love, we love CD lamb. The dude can do everything. Um, and then Tony Pollard is now one of the best running backs in the NFL. I mean, you touched I mean, like you said earlier, you get that guy, the rock and you know, he's, he's got a chance to house it every single time. Cause he's just that electric, but it all comes down to this play calling. Cause there's nothing holding this offense back besides Dak Prescott and the play calling. And I think Dak Prescott is good enough to lead this team to the playoffs and be good, but He's just got to take another step forward, maybe mentally. But, I mean, the Cowboys' offense is awesome. I mean, their whole team's awesome. Yeah, and I will say, between their three tight ends, Jake Ferguson, Luke Schoonmaker, who they took in the second round out of Michigan, and then Peyton Hendershot, I think that's honestly, like, between the three of them, you're going to get serviceable play. And I think Jake Ferguson can be really good for them. I compared him to Dalton Schultz coming out last year of Wisconsin, and it kind of proved to be a thing. He looked just like Dalton Schultz as a rookie, and now he's going to be starting in the Dalton Schultz role. So, I think he can do it. I think that they're going to be just fine and no drop off there. Uh, we'll get into their defense, which doesn't have a drop off as well. This this roster just loaded all the way throughout. Um, they got Demarcus Lawrence, who's kind of become one of the more underrated edge rushers of the last few years. He's still playing at a really high level, a really productive level, absolute beast. You have Michael Parsons, the best uh, top three edge rusher in the NFL right now. There's so many good edge rushers, but you could argue Michael Parsons is the best all day. He's the Definitely the most versatile player in the NFL. You can't really argue that. He's just a Swiss army knife from hell. He's an absolute beast. He can do everything. He's a quarterback's worst nightmare. You've got Sam Williams on the edge as well, who's like a Randy Gregory 2.0. So you, you've got so much potential um, on this defensive line. You bring in Mozzie Smith in the first round to be the nose tackle that can pass rush. He can he can be a really good run stopper. He's he's a beast. Uh, love that. Um, you got in the linebacker core, you've got Leighton Van Der Esk and Damone Clark, who's interesting, he was a fifth-round pick out of LSU last year, and he didn't play too much because he had a bad injury. But I, I think he actually was a really good pick, and he only fell because of that injury. So I think he can be a, a good starter for them. And they also have Jabril Cox out of LSU who could play as well. And they brought in DeMarvin Overson. So they definitely have a lot of options at linebacker, and I'm sure one will be good enough to replace Anthony Barr. And then, like I said, they're bringing Stephon Gilmore to compliment Trayvon Diggs in that corner room. That's awesome. Love that a lot. Um, Deron Bland in the slot is awesome he was a beast last year um, as a rookie and then um, they have a Malik Hooker who they just paid and Donovan Wilson in the safety room who played really good and then J. Ron Curse is kind of the guy that they the joker in this defense that they move around and he is an absolute monster oh man yeah and like you kind of said there's just not a lot of in this entire Cowboys you know roster there's just not a lot of weak spots and then they have pretty good depth I mean they've really built this team out pretty pretty special um and I mean you're talking about Micah Parsons being a top three. I think he's a top five player in the NFL. I mean, Micah Parsons is just on a different level. I That's mean, great. I argue, yeah, he's 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 top five player in the NFL. I mean, he is that good. I mean, he blows my mind watching this dude. I think he is the best edge rusher. I think he's the best defensive player in the NFL right now. And I don't really even think it's close, to be honest with you. Um, just just his play style is is unique, and it reminds me of like Prime Von Miller. You know, I think he's I think he is Prime Von Miller right now. And he's only in his what are we in his third year now, going into his third year. Yep, third year. <laughs> yeah, I call I'd call him Prime Von Miller, Khalil Prime Khalil Mack. I mean, this dude is just unreal. He's amazing. Um, so shout out Michael Parsons, you are him. 
Um, impossible and then, to block. <laughs> yeah, and he is impossible to block. You, you can't. I mean, this dude, and he's so versatile. I mean, it's just it's unreal. He just blows your mind watching him play. Um, but yeah, I mean, this defense is is very solid and just highlighted by Micah Parsons. But Mozzie Smith, who they drafted, I mean, that dude is gonna he's gonna help Micah Parsons in this this whole defense because he is a true one technique. Plug him right in the middle, nose tackle. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna take double teams almost every single time through the, you know, the center and the guard. And so he's so good. Demarcus Lawrence, so solid. Um, and I've, I've always been a Leighton Vanderesh. I mean, he's kind of been underwhelming since he was drafted in 2018. But I think, I think he is a solid linebacker. I don't think he's really a weak spot on the team. And then you got Trayvon Diggs, Mister Int. You know, I, I don't. I don't think he's one of the best corners in the league, but I think he's really a good playmaker and getting his hands on the ball. So shout out to him. And then drawn curse um, Malik hooker. I mean, Jordan Lewis, who's on the pop right now, but overall solid, solid defense. I mean, and, and really solid depth. So, I mean, they're, they're deep and that's one of the most important parts to build a good team. Yeah. One last thing that you did mention, I think Trayvon Diggs is a little underrated at this point, just because of the narrative surrounding him. And I think he is a really good playmaker and he did limit his risk last year. So I think he's, he's, he's learning and improving a little bit. And Stefan Gilmore, Stefan Gilmore couldn't be a better compliment to. Yeah. And a dude that, you know, makes plays on the ball and, and gets turnovers is arguably one of the most valuable things in the NFL. I mean, turning the ball over speaks for itself. That's changing the game. So, so, you know, maybe I'm a little bit too much of a hater, on you know him getting burned but he does make up for it with you know interceptions so you know definitely makes a lot of game changing plays and then we'll get into the the division winning Philadelphia Eagles um they lost to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl but they are led by an absolute juggernaut of a quarterback and the sky's the limit I'm sure they'll be right back um in that Super Bowl conversation at least and yeah this this Eagles team is going to be so exciting and when you look into the Eagles offseason, they they bring in DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny to compete for that starting running back role. It'll be interesting to see who wins that job. I think it'll definitely be a big committee approach in this Eagles backfield this year. They bring in Nicholas Morrow to start at linebacker after losing two really good linebackers we'll talk about in a second. They bring in Terrell Edmonds, who was a pretty good safety for the Steelers. Uh, he's going to start, though, because they, they lost a really good safety that we'll talk about in a second again. And then they bring in two Georgia dogs in the first round of the draft, Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith. Uh, they can't be talked about enough. They're absolutely awesome. They're beasts. They're they're stars. They're going to come into their own and be top 10 uh, players in their respective positions really soon. So love that. And then you got to talk about the notable losses for this team because this has got to be one of the more heftier lists of any team we've talked about in this series. They they honestly did have a lot of losses, and this doesn't even mention Shane Steichen and uh, Jonathan Gannon, both their coordinators, who are really good. So they lose Miles Sanders starting running back to the Panthers. Not not the biggest deal. They lose Isaac Sayamalu to the Steelers. Uh, Javon Hargrave, who gets a huge bag in San Fran, that's a loss for sure. They have a very stacked D line, but they lose Kaiser White and TJ Edwards in the linebacker room, who both got really nice contracts with their other teams. And then they lost Troncy Gardner Johnson and Marcus Epps in the safety room. So they definitely lost a lot of pieces, especially on that defense. But I mean, they're they're such a loaded roster. I'm sure they'll be fine. Oh yeah, no, their their roster seems to be fine, and how they and how they drafted. I mean, these guys had a bunch of draft picks, and not even to mention uh, Keely Ringo, another another Georgia Bulldog, and DeAndre Swift is another Georgia Bulldog who they all got, which is which is pretty funny. Howie Roseman, it kind of seems like he was just playing um, during the draft, and you know you got to respect him and give him a a round of applause because I mean he always kills the draft. He's one of the better GMs in in the NFL. Um, and then it'll be interesting. Yeah, the DeAndre Swift and Rashad Penny running back battle is interesting. I do think, however, DeAndre Swift will be their starter, but it is going to be a heavy running back by committee approach, which kind of seems like the Eagles are the one who invented that. And then a running back by committee with a quarterback that's going to run and take most of your your running touchdowns um, with their you know overpowered QB sneak that they they you know pretty much invented last year <laughs> with how they did it. Uh, but yeah, but they did, they did, they did take a loss. Um, they, they lost a lot of guys, but overall it seems like, you know, with their draft and, you know, they, they replenished them oh, pretty well. Yeah. You, we'll go into the roster so you guys can see they, they definitely aren't really taking any hits because of just how loaded this roster has been for years. Howie Roseman's just been drafting and hitting every single draft pick and it's a, it's a great roster. They've got, uh, Jalen Hurts, who is 
a juggernaut last year. Like I said, he was an MVP candidate. He would have won it if Patrick Mahomes didn't exist. And that's very impressive. He was great. He, his Super Bowl performance, if I'm being honest, that might have been the best Super Bowl performance from any losing team player ever. Like he was so good. I don't even know if he really had a bad play in that Super Bowl. He was great. Um, he's a, he's an awesome player, man. He's, he's developed so much. Um, they've got, uh, Shane Steichen leaving as their offensive coordinator over to be the head coach for Indianapolis. They have Brian Johnson, last year's quarterback coach, coming in, and I think it'll be a pretty seamless transition. Um, Brian Johnson has a really qualified background. He he's, he coached uh, Dak Prescott all the way dating back to Mississippi State days. He coached Anthony Richardson and Kyle Trask at Florida, and then last year was his first year in Philadelphia, and you saw the big jump that Jalen Hurts took, and I don't think anyone – is around Jalen Hurts more than Brian Johnson is the quarterback coach and they're really good friends. So I think they're going to have a really good offense and just pick up right where they left off and absolutely love the hiring of Brian Johnson. I think he'll be a head coach very soon. And they they got a crazy running back committee approach. They've got DeAndre Swift coming over, who's a little overrated if I'm being honest, but he's, he's definitely going to be good behind this offensive line with all these running backs around him. Um, Kenneth Gainwell's a really good receiving back. And then I think Rashad Penny might be the most productive back at the end of the day when it's all said and done. Um, I, I'm definitely drafting him in fantasy because I have a feeling that he's going to be pretty good um, in this offense if he stays healthy. And then they also have Boston Scott and uh, Trey Sermon that are all getting a lot of snaps. So it's a, it's pretty crazy right now. They've got a lot of things happening and, their, their receiving core is awesome. They've got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, uh, Olamedia to Zacchaeus, which was an underrated addition that they they brought in uh, to replace uh, Zach Paschal. And uh, Quez Watkins is a really good wide receiver for as well. So love that. they the better One of the better receiver duos in the NFL with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Just absolutely awesome. You can throw it up to them any given play, and they'll come down with most of the balls. And they, they've got Dallas Goddard, who's one of the more reliable, solid tight ends. And he had a really good season last year before he got hurt. And then they might just have the best offensive line in the NFL. They probably have the deepest offensive line in the NFL. They've got Jordan Mailata, absolute beast. Uh, Landon Dickerson, who's incredible. Jason Kelsey, Hall of Fame legend. Cam Jurgens, who's a really high upside athletic freak. And then Lay Johnson, the best right tackle in the NFL. It's incredible what they've done with this offensive line. And they got a lot of depth. And speaking of depth, you've got Marcus Mariota as the backup quarterback. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Howie Roseman, again, I just every time we talk about him, I want to clap for him because this dude is just, he is him. This dude, he's the best GM in the entire NFL. He does it year after year. He just hits on players. He hits on everything. He builds a nearly flawless roster that can compete with anyone at any time. Um, and yeah, I mean, he just, he continues to hit on players and it's just amazing. I mean, what this guy does, it just speaks for itself. But I mean, yeah, you're, you got, you're, your stars, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just highlight some of the stars. Of course, Jalen hurts, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, this year was a year three for him and oh man. Yeah. I mean, he's just taking a big step forward every single year and you know, where he was a top 10 player in the NFL last year. I mean, so this, this team can be right back in the super bowl. They got the best offensive line. You know, I kind of laugh because in this division, you got the Cowboys and the Eagles one, a one B, but the Eagles, I think are just, a little bit better. Um, they are, they would be my one A to one B to the Cowboys, but a flawless offensive line. They go out and they trade a first round pick um, last year for AJ Brown. who's one of the best receivers in the NFL, you know, and then they draft Devonte Smith. Who's just awesome. I mean, probably one of the better wide receiver twos in the NFL. And they just, there's depth. There's, there's just everything on this, this offense is just perfect. You know, there's no weak spots. Dallas Goddard is one of the a top 10 tight end in the NFL right now, but overall, solid roster you know i expect them to pick up where they left off last year yeah just a brilliant roster and that'll continue with this defense similar to the cowboys um you got brandon graham on the edge havoc reeker uh, josh sweat havoc reeker as well just a great edge duo um got hassan reddick who's one of the better edge rushers last year just so much talent coming off the edge on this defense nolan smith just a von miller-esque athletic freak coming off the edge i mean you could go on for days just talking about like the talent coming off the edge Derek barnett uh it's 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 crazy i, I can't believe it when you consider fletcher cox jordan davis jalen carter and milton williams are their interior rotation that jalen carter and milton williams would be starting for every single other team in the nfl in the interior so that is pretty crazy uh awesome they 
I would say their weakest point right now is their linebacking core uh, after losing two starters last year, two really good starters. Uh, they got Nicholas Morrow, which is a really cheap Band-Aid option, I'll be honest. And then uh, Zach Cunningham was a pretty good pickup if, if Morrow doesn't play good. And then they have N'Kobe Dean, who's going to start, and I think he'll be pretty good. Uh, he wasn't like a crazy prospect, but in the third round, that's where he belonged. And I think he can be a pretty good starter with all these great players around him and this Georgia culture they have going on here. Um and then the secondary is it, it, they they brought back the the corner duo. They they prioritize their trenches, their quarterback, and their corners this year, and they let everyone else walk. So they bring back Darius Slate and James Bradbury for one more a year. Uh, one of the better cornerback duos last year. They they have Avante Maddox in the slot, really underrated slot. And then they have uh, Kelly Ringo in the fourth round, who is a really high upside corner um, slash safety. Hopefully he can. Uh, get get it everything together and reach his upside here because he's in a really good spot. And then their their safeties right now are Terrell Edmonds and Reed Blankenship, which is a little rough. Uh, Kayvon Wallace was a prospect I really liked. Uh, Sidney Brown was a pretty fun draft pick, but yeah, they've got some work to do in that safety room. Oh, for sure. But I mean, this defense, I mean, just highlighted by the trenches is just disgusting. Yeah, and I'm sure you saw Jalen Carter in his like first play just absolutely destroys the tackle <laughs> and just goes and makes the tackle for loss and you're just like oh man this guy is this guy is ridiculous special He's i mean the fact he, he should have been you know a top five pick um he had a little bit of concerns because he didn't perform super good at his pro day um i think he was a little out of shape but oh my gosh just the talent this dude is and for him to fall to 10 and the, for the eagles to have a, a you know two first round picks and one of them being number 10 <laughs> just makes you sick. Cause Oh my gosh, they just keep adding. I mean, getting, getting <laughs> Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith, you know, as your, as your two first round picks is just nuts and it's amazing. And then they just kind of, I mean, like I, I laughed at earlier, they had Keely Ringo fall to the fourth round. They're like, you know, let's trade up and go get him. Why not? Let's, 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 let's do this Georgia Bulldogs culture. I mean, cause Georgia has been one of the best college teams, you know, the last, the last few years and their defense has been what has been amazing in college football and, and breaking the Eagles are taking advantage of that and getting the whole team. So you'll, you'll love to see it, but yeah, I mean, up front, you just can't speak enough for the trenches with Fletcher Cox, Josh sweat, Jalen Carter, Brandon Graham. It's just unreal. That is so solid. And then, yeah, as you, as you, as you start going back, it gets a little weaker into the linebacking core, you know, their linebacker core is very mid and uh, the Dean could be something special. Another Georgia bulldog, you know, super athletic, Another guy who fell in the draft, Miles Jack, maybe takes a step forward this year. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, getting James Bradbury back and Darius Slate was huge. They're trying to run it back with those guys and see what they could do. But really great corner duo. Um, the the safety duo, you know, the safety room I don't love. Trail Edmonds, Reed Blankenship, um, Sidney Brown has potential. Kayvon Wallace, all right. But, you know, maybe, maybe Keely Ringo mixes in. Don't love it, but it is solid you know i think it is okay i think they'll be fine and i just think the culture of the defense is what's going to carry them so i mean it all starts up front and you know the pass rush is going to be getting home they broke the sack record last year they bring in jalen carter i think they're going to break it again so so that that's the most important part that'll help their secondary play better but yeah this eagles team is is going to be fun next year they're going to be exciting yeah, a lot of stars on this team. It'll be a really fun uh, race with this division because there's a lot of good teams. And I, I guess we'll get into our uh, division award winner predictions. And let, let's hear your uh, NFC East MVP slash Offensive Player of the Year prediction. It's only one right answer here, Dan. <laughs> That's going to be Jalen Hurts. You know, was a was a was a league MVP candidate last year. You know, played one of the most flawless games in the Super Bowl. I mean, it's probably one of the best games played in a Super Bowl for a quarterback to lose. But, I mean, he's going against Patrick Mahomes, so what do you expect? You know, but he played nearly flawless, one of the best one of the best performances in the Super Bowl we've seen. Um, so, Jalen Hurts all day long, best player, you know, one of the best players in this division. Yeah, I mean, you can't really argue with that. He's an absolute beast. He's so good. He takes huge jumps every year he's going to develop even more this year he's just a hard worker he's got crazy work ethic and i i wanted to go a different route because i knew you we were going to choose jalen hurts i okay. i want to talk about this guy cd lamb he is just so fun so good i i feel like he just gets better every single game and i feel like he's going to take a big step up this year and really break out um, even with kellen moore leaving i just think he's just so good and so talented that he's going to be a a, a real alpha and he's going to be like a top 10 receiver in fantasy. I mean, that's probably 
I, I want to say like top five receiver in fantasy. I'm really drafting this guy because I just have a feeling that he's going to be great. Yeah, he's the true number one in that offense now. I mean, the offense will revolve around him. I mean, the passing game is going to be CD, CD, CD. And, you know, I don't really – I know Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver in football right now, but, I mean, CD Lamb, I don't think is far off ta- – I mean, he's not that far away talent-wise. I mean, I honestly thought CD Lamb was a, was a lot better prospect than, than Justin Jefferson coming out of college. And, I mean, CD Lamb makes all the catches. I just – you know, Justin Jefferson definitely gets fed a lot more and definitely has a lot higher target share. But maybe, you know, this year where CD is going to be the true focal point of that passing game, maybe we might see, you know, a 15, 1600 yard performance from him, you know. So I I, re- I do love that pick. That is as exciting one. And CD could really, really break out this year because he does get better every every year. Yeah, I really see him just completely breaking out. He's a, he's a beast. He comes down with everything. I, I love the guy. He, he has some of the craziest at most acrobatic catches you'll ever see, but let's hear your uh, defensive player of the year prediction. Another just obvious one, <laughs> uh, Michael Parsons, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this dude breaks the sack record this season. In my opinion, he is a prime Von Miller. This guy is all over the field. He just makes plays. I mean, he can cover. He's in my opinion, the best pass rusher in the entire NFL right now. And I just expect bigger things from him to come this year. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins defensive MVP in the entire league. So easy, easy division pick winner for me right here for, for defense player of the year. Yeah. I've got to go with Mike Parsons as well. I don't really think anyone's really touching him in this division. He's just an absolute freak. Like you said, he might be the best defensive player in the NFL when you consider everything that he can do is versatility and he is impossible to block off the edge. He is just a, absolute freak it's crazy his pass rush moves how fast he is off the edge and he wasn't even a edge rusher in college it's pretty incredible this guy the sky's the limit he's like lawrence taylor-esque he's he's awesome absolute legend already yeah yeah i love it you know i I think it's too obvious and maybe maybe we might see a sack record broken by michael parsons because he is that dude and they're and dallas is gonna probably they're they're prioritizing playing defensive football this year and running the ball so Maybe another big step forward for for Michael Parsons this year, which seems crazy to say. Definitely got the upside to to break that sack record. Let's hear your offensive rookie of the year prediction. Uh, so my offensive rookie of the year is going to be Mr. Jalen Hyatt, and I really think he's going to be you know one of the most exciting playmakers in this division. He's really got that. I mean, he didn't run four two speed, but it it feels like he has that four two speed you know game speed, and I think he's going to take the top off the of defenses this year, and I. I think he's going to score a lot. And I think Danny Dimes is going to feed him a lot. And I, we're going to see some exciting plays from Jalen Hyatt. And I, I think he's going to take that title. I'm honestly getting similar vibes uh, as well. I think he's going to be a beast. And I, like, he's so long. He's so like lengthy. He's, he's really fast. He's incredibly fast. He will take the top off. And like Darius Slayton's been productive the last few years. And I think he's a lot better than Darius Slayton. So I think he, I personally think he's going to overtake that Darius Slayton role eventually and be really good productive receiver as a rookie and uh, he's awesome I, I expect that as well I went with a different route and he's also a giant I went with uh, John Michael Schmitz he is an absolute beast I I thought he was a first round uh, I thought he should have been in the first round at least he's awesome he reminds me of Creed Humphrey uh, he, I think he'll be one of the better centers in the NFL immediately as a rookie um, he his his NFL debut yesterday in his first preseason game he had 19 pass block snaps and he had zero pressures allowed and I know it's preseason, but like that's pretty impressive for your first NFL action and a center with all the hectic stunts going on. You you don't allow one pressure. That's that's pretty awesome. So that just shows what kind of guy this guy is, and he's an anchor. Oh man, yeah. I mean, we are we're getting weirdly similar Creed Humphrey vibes from uh, from John Michael Schmitz. I mean, he just seems like a flawless. You know, he can read the defense from from the center position. He just he and already an elite level, it seems like, as you know, as a as a rookie playing in his first uh, preseason game. So I absolutely love that. You know, Creed Humphrey vibes for sure going on right now with John Michael Schmitz. And I think I think that's a great pick. I love that. All right. Let's hear your uh, defensive rookie of the year. Uh, so I watched Jalen Carter's first play yesterday <laughs> for the Eagles. And I immediately I'm going to say Jalen Carter I mean, this dude at Georgia was just freaky. Um, I mean, he's one of the more freaky defensive 
I think I, honestly defensive line players we've seen come out of college and what he was able to do and what he in the first play what he's able to do for the Eagles and it's only going to benefit him being on that Eagles line where there's Fletcher Cox, Josh Sweat, Hassan Reddick. I mean this guy's going to get a lot of one-on-one opportunities and absolutely just demolish defense or offenses. So give me Jalen Carter all day long. Yeah, I have to go with Jalen Carter as well. He's just too good. Definitely the most talented defensive player in this whole draft class just an absolute monster he, in the most perfect situation he could be in he's gonna he's gonna be a beast uh, eventually replacing Fletcher Cox um, next to his college teammate Jordan Davis so that's just awesome I love it I love all the Georgia players they have in here and I did want to shout out one guy uh, Deontay Banks for the Giants because he's gonna be starting day one and I think he's gonna be shut down and a playmaker for them so I definitely think that uh, Deontay Banks could um, could see a world where he wins this award if, if Carter doesn't have too crazy production yeah i could see that you know maybe Jalen carter falls behind the depth chart just because there's so many pieces and deontay banks you know just true you know shut down corner you know and he has some interceptions that's that's a good you know good pick for for the award but yeah like we both have Jalen carter and we don't expect him to fall behind we expect him to get snaps and just be in those one-on-one opportunities and just crush this award though yeah, he's an absolute beast. Uh, that's the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's hear your NFC East division winner. Uh, you know, I have to go with the Eagles. Um, I just think they are a little bit further ahead. I think next year you could see the Giants, you know, overtaking them. I think the Eagle or the Eagles will have a lot of free agents they lose at the end of next year, but they're kind of running it back with a very similar roster and they didn't really. They did lose a lot of people, but they were able to really replenish it in the draft this year. Um, and so I just see the Eagles picking up where they left off. And I think they're just the obvious division winner for this for this year. I, I do think there could be multiple playoff teams. Though. I think I think you could honestly see three teams. I think the Cowboys and the Giants could both make the playoffs, too. But I think the Eagles will win the division. Yeah, we saw three playoff teams in this division last year. And I definitely think that's almost a lock to happen again this year. I think the commanders could definitely see a world where they do make the playoffs with that defense. And if Sam Howell just hits. The commanders will definitely be in playoff contention. Uh, the Giants will probably be a playoff, a wild card lock at least. And the Cowboys are are going to be up there. I don't have them winning this division ultimately because I think Mike McCarthy does hold them back. And I, I have to have the Eagles win this division because they don't really have anything holding them back too bad other than a few losses. But they they just replenish that roster, roster so well. I don't really see them having any regression really they're just awesome and Jalen Hurts is going to be playing at such a high level that they, they can do anything on any any given week they can be anyone throwing it out to AJ Brown Devontae Smith it's going to be fireworks in Philadelphia and I'm really excited to watch 100 percent and best division in the NFC I have to say it you know this is the best division in the NFC in my opinion I don't think it's close um shout out you know to the I mean shout out to commanders eagles cowboys you know um, they're all, I mean, this, this, this whole division is, is, is loaded and stacked and it, it's going to be, it's going to be competitive. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a fist fight, um, through, you know, all 17 games. So I I'm excited. I'm excited for them, but I, I do think the Eagles will, you know, will come out victorious. Yep. Super great all around division. All four of these teams are going to be in almost every game. They're gonna be really competitive. So it's really fun talking about these rosters, really, really great rosters, deep rosters. So. Yeah, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the NFL Seekers podcast. Uh, we've got some fantasy football positional rankings episodes coming out now for uh, fantasy season, so that should be really fun. Uh, so stay tuned to the NFL Seekers podcast on all platforms. Yes, sir. Loved it. Peace. Peace.